Hello, in this video, we're gonna take a moment to talk about another SSH client. So if you're using Microsoft Windows, there is a built-in SSH tool, depending on what version of Windows you're using, that you can choose to leverage to SSH into your Linux machines. All right, and that would be something like open up the Windows command prompt, type in CMD, and simply type in SSH, and you have a lot of flexibility built into this. But there may be something lacking and we can kind of solve for that problem by using a tool called PuTTY. To obtain PuTTY, which is an SSH client and a few other tools that we're gonna actually leverage here in a moment, we're gonna to go to Google and just simply type in PuTTY SSH. And from there, there should be a download button, I would imagine, pretty near the top of your results, depending on how many ads you see. And then from here, we're gonna to choose to download PuTTY and we'll grab probably the most recent 64-bit MSI installer. Choose that. And since this is just random, untrusted software, we should go through the process of virus total and just to have some type of confidence that what we just downloaded is not, in fact, malware. We'll choose to go to virustotal.com, upload the very MSI installer file we just downloaded a moment ago, and then see what virus total has to say about this. Is it trustworthy? Is it malicious? And based on the results, there's some level of indication that it's probably not malicious. So go ahead and install that. And once you do, we can invoke the tool by simply typing in PuTTY after typing the Windows command or the Windows button, P-U-T-T-Y, and opening up the tool like that. From here, we have the ability to SSH into a machine. But when we're using key-based authentication for SSH, it's not as easy as simply going to an IP address and then typing in a password because a password won't work. We have to use a key. But PuTTY has its own special format that it wants its keys to be in. So a .pem file that we download straight from Amazon or straight from Azure is not the right format that PuTTY wants it to be in. So what we have to do is do another step or actually a couple steps. So what that looks like is typing in, once again, or pressing the Windows key and typing in PuTTY Gen, P-U-T-T-Y Gen. This is another tool that got installed as part of that MSI installation package from a moment ago. I'll open this up and then I'll choose to load a key by pressing the load button. And then I'll go to my downloads directory where I should, you know, depending on what you already have accomplished with Azure, you may already have a, a you know, a key file .pem file. I'll open that up. And then from here, I will then choose to save the public key. Actually, the private key. Sorry, save the private key. Save the private key, and you should maybe ideally put a password or a passphrase to protect it. Um, but in this specific demo example, I'm not going to. So I'll say yes right here, and then I'll save this to the downloads directory and call it SSH test, and that should be sufficient. And note the type of file we're saving is .ppk. I'll save that, close this out, but we're still not quite ready to use that key. There's one other tool that we're gonna use that was also installed as part of the PuTTY package, and that is PAGENT, PuTTY AGENT. To access that, press the Windows key again, type in PAGENT, click that button, and what should happen is it should be running in the background. So choose this little icon down here at the bottom right, or maybe open up your uh, taskbar options and then double click the P agent tool and say add a key. And then from here, we'll choose SSH test from our downloads directory. Once I open this up, I can simply close the P agent. And what's now happened is behind the scenes, so to speak, P agent is basically housing or holding onto our private key. Then here from within PuTTY, this tool links essentially to that P agent tool that has the key already loaded into it. So when I go to SSH into my Azure virtual machine, the key is already loaded into PAgent, which is essentially part of PuTTY. So how this is gonna work is going back to the three main things we need to SSH into machine. That's the IP address. We probably already have that if we're kind of doing something more advanced now, which is using a different SSH client. We have the username to log in with, and we have our key. Of course, this has changed. Since it's not a PEM anymore, it's not PPK, just take a, a note of that as well. So from there, I'll simply copy this IP address. I'll go over to PuTTY and I'll paste it in and then I'll say open. And then from there, 
since this is a new tool, this is part of the finger, fingerprint authentication process again, or validation process, I'll say yes, and then provide the username. The username is test SSH, and this should be all it takes to successfully log into my Azure machine. Now note, this is not the biggest font. I would go ahead and right click on the top of this. I'll say change settings in putty. I'll change the appearance and it'll make the font larger, which is something pretty nice that not every single SSH client allows us to do. What else? Well, we have the ability to change colors within SSH running in PuTTY. We have the ability to do lots of interesting, useful things by changing our settings like SSH tunneling and proxies, and a lot more functionality that you may not have with your default SSH client. Hence the point here of why you might wanna look at PuTTY as your preferred SSH client.